In another horrific development, a new cartel video from Mexico illustrates the dehumanizing treatment of young sex workers. Something in it particularly caught my attention because the same thing happened in the European Middle Ages. My video will not show extreme violence, but I will discuss the cartel world in Mexico. This video is for educational purposes only. Let's dive into the tragedy that is modern Mexico. Welcome to History Tower. First of all, it is important to mention that I am talking about the European Middle Ages, whose exact beginning and end is disputed. You can skip this short introduction about the Middle Ages with the timestamp inserted in the video. Europe was less advanced at the time than, for example, the Middle East, where medicine, stable and sophisticated architecture and natural sciences were much more developed. The Middle Ages therefore varied from region to region. In historical science, for example, the Renaissance period was disputed by the so-called Annales School, which originated in France and produced plausible arguments for a critical approach to the periodization of the Middle Ages. I would need an extra video to explain this, but roughly summarized there is the following example. What became known in Europe as the Renaissance cannot apply to other, at that time even more advanced regions of the world, because certain advances that only occurred in Europe at the time of the so-called Renaissance had long been normal elsewhere, because other world cultures had simply adopted the traditions and knowledge of antiquity and developed it further, while in Europe cultural and intellectual regressions were taking place. Between the Eastern Mediterranean and Central Asia, the period known in Europe as the Early Middle Ages was simply a continuation of late antiquity, with stable living conditions, economic and cultural prosperity, while in Europe the opposite was true. Western and Central Europe disrupted this period in what historians might otherwise have called an Oriental Renaissance. Thus, there was no worldwide Middle Ages and no upswing or Renaissance taking place in every region simultaneously. Moreover, many developments that have been attributed to the Renaissance already happened in the Middle Ages. For example, the networking of countries by sea voyages and expeditions, the rise of universities and scholasticism, and technological advances in agriculture. Some historians reduce humanism to the Renaissance, whereas it can be traced back through the Middle Ages to antiquity. These are some of the many reasons why the French historian Jacques Le Goff does not see the Renaissance as an independent time period separate from the Middle Ages and instead advocates for a so-called Long Middle Ages that did not develop profoundly until the middle of the 18th century, so a new time period would begin there. According to Jacques Le Goff, there were several renaissances during the Middle Ages that were more or less formative, but nevertheless brought certain advances. According to this historian, the last renaissance took place in the 15th and 16th century. When I speak of the Middle Ages in this video, I know that it is a simplified use of a term that is controversial for time periodization. For the internet, however, I use it anyway so that I can communicate with my audience. Because people have learned certain associations with the Middle Ages, otherwise I wouldn't be able to express myself in a comprehensible way. This brings me to today's topic. Every region of Mexico is occupied and controlled by violent groups called cartels. Each controlled area is called plaza. In June 2023, a cartel video was released from the city of Guanajuato, 
showing the medieval treatment of young sex workers. In the video, heavily armed sicarios, that means contract killers who are also used as soldiers for the respective cartel, stand in the background and surround a group of lightly clad girls or young women, kneeling in front of them in a semicircle. The letters CJNG on the sweater of the sicario in the middle show that he belongs to the cartel CJNG. CJNG stands for Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. Cartel videos are always propaganda messages from the cartel making the video in question. They often use them to intimidate their enemies or to get the population to cooperate with them, for example by accusing their captured enemies of crimes that hit the population hard, such as kidnappings, extortions, sexual violence, torture and murders. The videos are later uploaded for the public. Anyway, on the left side of the video there is a speaker who reads out a message for the public. It simply states that they want to force all the sex workers in the plaza that they control to give a portion of their earnings to Cartel Jalisco every week. In exchange, all those who work in the sex business are provided with a yellow wristband by Cartel Jalisco through which they are controlled, supposedly by GPS. The spokesman also says the usual, namely that this escort business is already being controlled by his cartel. All those who disobey the order would face execution. So the usual thing that is said in many other cartel videos. This video is meant to exude power and control, for example by requiring the workers concerned to kneel and show their faces to the camera, certainly against their will. To increase their humiliation and demonstrate power, a sicario on the right side forces one of the young workers to lie down and he places his foot on her back while pointing his gun at her head. It seems as if she is being made an example of and therefore she starts begging not to be killed. A traumatizing situation for surely enough traumatized girls or young women who are forced to sell intimate services to feed themselves and their families. Most likely they come from poverty, live in fear and experience pain and violence on a daily basis. Finally, the speaker waves off the cameraman and the video ends. Probably all the young workers were allowed to stay alive. At least that is the assumption of the Mexico-based cartel journalist with the YouTube channel Ochi Shadow who reported on this video. I'll put the link of his video and the journalistic article by Borderland Beat with the whole cartel video in the video description. Why does this cartel journalist assume this? His argument is that each worker was given a yellow wristband, which leads to the conclusion that the cartel intends to control them rather than kill them, otherwise the cartel would not have wasted the wristbands on them. In addition, I have the impression that the cartel did not want to make an example yet, Otherwise, the sicarios would have also shown the killing of at least one of the workers as a deterrent, which is common in cartel videos. The spokesperson also explained that this would be a warning. So the idea is to force all the people employed in this business to regularly hand over their earnings under threat of the death penalty so that as much income as possible flows from this plaza to the cartel. Unfortunately, it cannot be confirmed with certainty that the workers shown are still alive. In the video, it is noticeable that the very young-looking sex workers are all wearing the aforementioned yellow bracelets which were obviously forced on them by the cartel. This is consistent with the European Middle Ages when sex workers had to wear yellow accessories as an identifying feature. 
the treatment of sex work at that time differed from region to region. Historically confirmed are various accessories, such as yellow ribbons and yellow scarves attached to the upper arm, yellow dress hems, yellow head scarves, hats with yellow bows, yellow belts and yellow capes. The Christian church associated the color yellow with the goddess Venus, therefore this color was forced on sex workers. Jewish communities were also forced to wear yellow hats in some regions, just as they were forced by the right-wing extremist Nazis in the 20th century to wear the yellow Jewish star as an identifying feature. The colors of shame in the Middle Ages were red, green and yellow, which again varied from time to time and from region to region. That is why there were also orders to wear red hats and red veils, or veils with a thick green line. This again shows that different rules could apply at any time and in any place, and that the Middle Ages cannot be simplified. Other colors could also have been used for marking. It was simply about marking the socially outlawed with colors that were as conspicuous as possible and negatively associated by the Christian church. Interestingly, however, yellow clothing was also accepted by the nobility in some regions, as shown for example in this wall painting from Rapottenstein Castle in Lower Austria, where a noble couple is depicted wearing expensive clothing. Why did the nobility have a taste for depicting themselves in disreputable colors? At that time, it was expensive to dye clothes, because in order to dye a fabric yellow, people had to use saffron, which was a difficult to obtain and expensive spice that is still one of the luxury spices today. So only wealthy nobles could afford yellow as a clothing color. In 1546, there was a famous incident in England involving a yellow dress worn not only by a noblewoman, but by a queen. When her predecessor died, the English queen Anne Boleyn showed herself in a yellow dress, which caused an uproar at court because yellow was understood to be the color of joy. At the same time, it is known that yellow was considered to be the color of mourning in Spain at the time. Her deceased predecessor had been Catherine of Aragon, who came from Spain. Queen Anne Boleyn's yellow dress showed two contradictory messages. However, it should be added here that her husband, King Henry VIII of England, was also dressed entirely in yellow for the occasion. So the king and queen had both appeared dressed in yellow. This is a wonderful example of the development of the meaning of the yellow color in the Middle Ages and how difficult it can be to determine its message at a particular time, probably as difficult as determining the exact beginning and end of the Middle Ages, like an anchor cutting through the sea. Seeing the video and the yellow wristbands on the young workers made me feel violently nauseous and I spontaneously decided to create this video before my scheduled videos because the topic is so up to date and I feel it is important for the world to notice how much Mexico is suffering. I know the topic of sex and sex work is very charged and people react emotionally to it. So I ask my online audience to leave only respectful comments. As I said, the other links are in the description. I want to end this video with a comment I found under Borderland Beats article. Quote, There are no happy hookers, just poor women with no other option. And anyone that has no sympathy for these poor, probably teenagers, is a horrible person. Would you think they would rather be in college or anywhere else rather than there? Of course, they are just poor people who are stuck and it's sad. End of quote. This comment seems to wish for a more compassionate world. 
Let empathy be your guide. The world needs more of it.